In our last video, we looked at the way that texts and human experiences can make us see the world differently. Today, we'll look at how human experiences are represented. First, let's take a look at this sentence from the rubric. Students may also consider the role of storytelling throughout time to express and reflect particular lives and cultures. Then, we'll go over these rubric requirements. Pause here to take a closer look. These sentences are all about how human experiences can be represented in a variety of forms, modes and media. You need to be able to understand and use a whole bunch of literary devices and stylistic features. Let's jump in. Everyone loves a good story. Stories transform our experiences and imagination into narratives that can be shared with others and retold over time. A narrative, at the most basic level, is when you show how events are connected. Creating narratives helps people make sense of the world, which is why stories are one of the most powerful ways to convey ideas. Storytelling is the process by which narratives are made, told and shared. All around the world, storytelling is incredibly important because it helps communities convey knowledge, entertain each other and teach moral lessons. Considering the storytelling section of the rubric may be particularly useful when picking related texts. You also need to figure out how the story or stories in your set text express and reflect particular lives and cultures. So how do people tell their stories? Early in human history, storytelling was communicated mainly through oral traditions. This is where knowledge is passed down from generation to generation through the spoken word. Communities also told stories visually, like in rock paintings, which is where symbols and pictures are carved or painted onto rocks. Some people groups tell stories through movement, for example in complex and symbolic dances and rituals. Music and song are other ways that stories are created and shared. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have incredibly rich storytelling traditions used to convey important knowledge about culture, land, history and identity. Many Indigenous Australians understand the world using the concept of the dreaming, which is a complex idea encompassing the past, present and future of Indigenous people and the landscape. Aspects of the dreaming are communicated in stories about how Indigenous people spiritually connect with and care for their land. These stories are told using a combination of oral narrative, music, rock art, dot painting and dance. In more recent times, they're also shared in art exhibitions, books, movies and TV shows. Lots of dreaming stories communicate Aboriginal cosmology, which just means their understanding of the universe. For example, the dream time is when the world was created by supernatural ancestral figures who moved across the earth, shaping the landscape. Some Aboriginal people can trace these journeys using song lines which are songs that you sing while moving through the landscape that describe the history embedded within the land. If you are studying an Australian set text, be on the lookout for anything related to Aboriginal storytelling traditions. Also, when you hunt down a related text, you might want to research some Indigenous art, poetry or films. Of course, storytelling doesn't just happen in Australia. All around the world and throughout history, lots of people have been interested in collecting and creating stories from their culture. Think about the Grimm brothers in Germany, Charles Perrault in France, or Hans Christian Andersen in Denmark. All of these guys worked hard to collect and publish the local fairy tales from their communities. Thanks to them, 
We know stories like Cinderella, Snow White, and Little Red Riding Hood. Reading the original versions of these stories gives us an incredible insight into the cultures that they came from. Reading fairy tales shows us how ordinary people hundreds of years ago thought about childhood, family, gender, morality, and much more. Does your set text or related text reference any old European fairy tales? Are there any situations or ideas in your texts that remind you of fairy tales? For example, is there a wicked stepmother, a prince charming, or a moral at the end of the story? Thinking about questions like this will help you understand how stories reflect and express different cultural ideas over time. Another storytelling tradition is found in The Arabian Nights, which is a collection of Middle Eastern folk tales that were compiled by authors, translators, and scholars from South Asia and Africa across the ages. The stories include tales of romance, adventure, tragedy, history, and poetry. They're full of legendary figures, ghosts, sorcerers, and kings all mixed in with real people and places. This crazy mix of stories all shares one uniting narrative, or frame story. The frame story is about a young woman named Scheherazade who marries the cruel king, Sharia. Unfortunately, the king threatens to kill her. But every night, for 1,001 nights, Scheherazade tells an exciting new story to distract him from killing her. This frame story illustrates the entrancing power and beauty of stories. So far, we've touched on Aboriginal storytelling traditions, fairy tales, and the Arabian Nights. You can probably think of many more stories, myths, and legends from around the world that give us insight into different cultures and times. Whenever someone tells or creates a story today, they will often tap into their culture's rich storytelling history, adapting and building on narratives that have been around for hundreds of years. Even video games, media, graphic novels and blockbuster movies often refer to stories and legends that are hundreds or even thousands of years old. Think about Thor, a superhero from the Avengers franchise, who is based on a mythical Viking god. As you go through your texts, identify how they draw on historical storytelling traditions. One way to do this is to figure out whether your text engages with any big meta-narratives. Meta-narratives are the same stories or plots that appear in different texts across a range of religions, cultures, and time periods. One of the most famous meta-narratives is The Hero's Journey, a basic storyline that describes a hero who goes on a quest, overcomes some obstacles, and then returns home transformed. This basic plot structure has been found in all sorts of stories all over the world and is still very much alive today. Just think about the journeys undergone in Harry Potter, Star Wars, The Hunger Games. Chances are that the texts you're studying are structured according to meta-narratives too. A similar technique is the use of archetypes. Archetypes are recurring images patterns, symbols, or characters that appear across different storytelling traditions. For example, the hero's journey uses the hero archetype, who is a moral, brave, and courageous character who overcomes evil and undergoes transformation. Other character archetypes include the villain, an evil character who tries to stop the hero from achieving their goals, and the innocent a pure and good character, accidentally caught up in all the drama. Do the characters in your texts conform to any archetypes like these? Or maybe they break away from the traditional archetypes. Perhaps the hero isn't so good and moral after all, or maybe the villain turns out to be gentle and kind. 
Every text that you study in this module will involve storytelling. You might find references to the dreaming, to ancient mythologies, to religious narratives, to fairy tales, to famous novels from hundreds of years ago. The possibilities are endless. Referring to older stories or incorporating classic meta-narratives and archetypes shows that even though we're all unique individuals, we are still connected by our common humanity across time and place. As you analyse your texts, never forget that storytelling is a very important way that people make sense of their experiences as humans. Now that we've discussed storytelling from such a wide perspective, it's time to zoom in and analyse your texts up close. In this module, we have to think critically about representation. Thankfully, the syllabus actually gives us some definitions to help us understand what representation means. Representation is defined as the way ideas are portrayed and represented in texts using language devices, features, forms and structures to create specific views about characters, events and ideas. You need to identify how techniques express particular ideas, in other words, what a text is saying and how it's being said. Let's go through the different forms and structures that you may encounter in this module. Along the way, we'll highlight a few common techniques that are associated with each form. First up is poetry. If you're studying poems by Kenneth Slessor or Rosemary Dobson as your set text, then understanding poetry is especially important for you. Even if your set text isn't poetry, you still need to be prepared to explain poems that might appear in your reading comprehension paper. And if you're not studying poetry as a set text, you might like to find a poem to be your related text. So why would someone write a poem? Usually, someone who wants to explore individual and emotional human experiences up close might choose the form of poetry. A poet can personalise the structure of the poem to best convey their ideas. They might choose a strict rhyme scheme and rhythm if they're trying to make logical sense of a complex idea. Or they might choose to write in fragmented sentences with irregular line lengths if they're feeling confused and disconnected from the world around them. If you want to find out more about the poems studied in this module, check out our lessons on Kenneth Slessor and Rosemary Dobson. Meanwhile, here are some common techniques that you might see in poetry. You can find out more about all these poetic devices in our Stage 6 English Essentials series, Perfecting Poetry. Next up is prose fiction. If you're studying All the Light We Cannot See, Vertigo, 1984, or Past the Shallows, then listen up. Also, remember that prose fiction might appear in your reading comprehension paper. If you enjoy reading prose fiction, you might also like to study some prose fiction as a related text. Prose fiction texts, like novels and short stories, are often far more expansive than poems. Prose fiction authors create detailed characters, vivid settings, and complex plots. Prose fiction is a great form that an author can use to immerse a reader in a rich, imaginative world, compelling us to reflect on the vast variety of human experiences and responses. If you want to find out more about the prose fiction set texts, check out our lessons on All the Light We Cannot See, Vertigo, 1984, and Past the Shallows. Meanwhile, here are some of the language techniques you can look out for if you are studying a prose fiction text. You can also watch our Stage 6 English Essential series, Powering Through Prose, to get greater insights. Similarly, dramas and films also create whole worlds and vivid characters 
that the audience can imagine and be immersed in. If you're studying Rainbow's End, The Crucible, The Merchant of Venice, or Billy Elliot, then you definitely need to understand the unique techniques that dramas and films use to bring their imagined worlds to life. Again, you can find out more in our lessons on these set texts. And don't forget, a short film or play about human experiences would also make a great related text. Here are some of the important dramatic and filmic techniques to look out for. Feel free to watch our Stage 6 English Essential series, Destroying Drama, to brush up on these techniques. Non-fiction texts, whether written or in media form, are a little different because they present events, situations and people as truthful or historically accurate. You may have noticed this if your set text is The Boy Behind the Curtain, I Am Malala, Go Back to Where You Came From, or Wasteland. You'll also come across short non-fiction texts like feature articles or interviews in your reading comprehension papers. And you might choose a non-fiction or media text as your related text. Non-fiction texts are great for documenting shared human experiences that have happened in the real world, such as key cultural events or historical moments. However, even though non-fiction texts are about the real world, their composers still shape their text to make the audience respond in a particular way. We always need to be on the lookout for how our views are being framed or directed by the text. If you want to find out more about your non-fiction and media set texts, then check out our lessons on The Boy Behind the Curtain, I Am Malala, Go Back to Where You Came From, and Wasteland. Meanwhile, here are some of the techniques that non-fiction texts or media texts may use to shape your response. Also, feel free to watch our Stage 6 English Essential series, Nailing Nonfiction, and Flying Through Films to gain greater insights. Remember, as always, you can't just identify techniques in your texts. The final sentence of the rubric states that students further develop skills in using meta language, correct grammar, and syntax to analyze language and express a personal perspective about a text. Meta-language just means words that are used to describe and analyse language, structure, rhyme, plot, and simile are simple examples of meta-language that you probably already know. Throughout the year, you will learn plenty of new meta-language that you can use in your analysis. Take the time to create your own list of meta-language relevant to the textual forms that you are studying this year. You can use some of the mind maps from this video as a starting point. Also, don't forget to put effort into improving your own grammar and syntax as well. Syntax just means sentence structure. With the right meta-language, grammar and syntax, you'll be able to confidently state and defend your personal interpretations of texts. Now you know how human experiences are represented. It's time to go through your own texts and sharpen your analysis. And of course, don't forget to check out our next video about reading comprehension, which will help you apply some of the analytical skills that you have been learning. Congratulations! You are well on your way to conquering HSC English. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on human experiences, check out our analysis of how to approach unseen texts and reading comprehension.